All right, so today we're diving into something uh, pretty big. Yeah. We're talking about college, but maybe not in the way you'd expect. Definitely not the typical college talk. Yeah, we've got all this crazy AI stuff happening and... Changing everything, right? Exactly. Like, how is this impacting education? That's yeah. what we're looking at. Big questions. Huge. We've got research papers. We've got some slides from Korea University. Even how Korean universities are adapting, which is interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating deep dive, so... Let's jump in. Let's do it. Okay, so it's not just about computers getting faster anymore. Right. It's AI that can outsmart a lot of us. Oh, yeah. I mean, have you seen ChatGPT? Of course. It got a 124 on an IQ test. Which is wild. 95% of Americans score lower. It really makes you think, what even IS intelligence these days? Seriously. Like when a computer program can do that. It makes those traditional ideas about intelligence yeah. kind of shaky, right? For sure. And then you get into the purpose of education itself. Right, right. And these Korea University slides, they just nail it. They really do. Like straight up asking, why go to college at all? What's the point? Yeah. Such simple questions, but suddenly with AI. It's way more complicated. Exactly. So it's yeah. almost like we got to rethink the whole thing. Potentially, yeah. And here's another layer to all this. There's this research on social biomarkers. I heard of that, yeah. And it's saying our social connections, especially when we're kids. Oh, early childhood stuff can actually affect how our brains develop. Literally shape our brains. It's wild. Yeah. So like where you grow up, who you're around. Makes a difference. Can actually like make you smarter. I never. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't realize it mattered that much. Think of it this way. Imagine a pencil, but it has a tiny crack. Okay. You might not see it at first. Right. But put enough pressure, that crack breaks the whole thing. Ah. Now imagine that crack is a weakness in a child's social life. Oh, I see, I see. So even something small. It can have a huge impact later on. Exactly. It's called the ripple effect. Makes sense. Those early social things, they ripple out and affect learning everything. Okay, so this is all brains and social connections. Yeah. But where does college fit in? I'm not quite connecting the dots. Well, what if college is more than just learning facts. Mm. What if it's actually a way to build those social connections? Like it could help overcome those cracks we were talking about. Potentially, yeah. College is a curated social experience. That's a good way to put it. You build a network, which is huge E for success. Especially now with AI taking off. It's even more important now. Like college becomes this brain-boosting, network-building machine. In a way, yeah. And speaking of brains, we have this visualization of Korean university departments. Oh, yeah. That was cool. It's so complex, all interconnected, like a brain itself. It really shows how even traditional universities are adapting, trying to break down barriers between subjects, encourage collaboration. You got to keep up, right? It's the only way. Now, this brings us back to ChatGPT, our AI superstar. The one acing all the tests. What if, and I know this is a big what if. Go for it. AI could actually H- LP people who didn't have those strong social networks early on. Now that's an interesting thought. Right. Could AI, like ChatGPT, actually provide personalized learning, even mentorship? Like a digital mentor to catch you up? Filling those gaps, yeah. That would be amazing. Oh. Okay, we've covered so much already. A lot of ground. Yeah. AI, brains, social networks, how college might be changing. It's a lot to unpack. And we're just getting started. There's more to come. So before we go too far, Let's look at some real examples. Good idea. You know, there was that slide with the woman named Mary. Well, right, Mary. She said she'd never even met anyone who went to college. Wow, that's eye-opening. You can tell just from that statement. Her whole social context. Yeah, probably shaped her view of college completely. Maybe even discouraged her. It's possible. It makes you think, how much do our social circles influence us? Even for big decisions like education. Huge decisions. And that's where this idea of social capital comes in. Like a hidden advantage. It's the relationships we have, the shared experiences. People with strong social capital. They have more opportunities, information, support. So helpful for navigating college. Definitely gives them an edge. But what about those who didn't have the chance to build that capital? That's a good question. Is college still worth it for them? Hmm. It might depend. On what? their goals, their situation. Okay. College gives you knowledge, skills. Right. But there are other paths to success, too. You don't always need a degree. Not at all. There are successful entrepreneurs, artists. People who skipped college entirely. Exactly. The key is being adaptable, resourceful, always learning. Makes sense. And who knows? Maybe AI will even help with that. Create personalized learning paths for those who choose something different. That would be a game changer. Okay. So social networks 
brain development, the changing role of college. Lots to consider. But there's one big thing we haven't talked about. Cost. Ah, the elephant in the room. The rising cost of education. It's a barrier for so many. It can't be ignored when we're talking about the value of college. It's this massive obstacle. For sure. Could make college seem impossible. Uh, that financial burden. It creates its own ripple effect. Absolutely. Impacts mental health, career choices, everything. It's such a complex issue. No easy solutions. But I mean, we have to figure it out. If we want everyone to have a fair shot. Regardless of background. That's the goal. So it sounds like the answer to, is college worth it, is... It depends. Yeah. There's no one size fits all. The values differ for everyone. Depends on your goals, your finances, your social network. Even the job market, which is... Always changing. Constantly shifting, yeah. All right, let's step back for a second. Big picture. Okay. AI, social connections, education evolving. What does it all mean? Where do we go from here? That's the question. So in the next part of our deep dive... <laughs> we'll look at some potential scenarios. What might the future of education look like? AI's role, the changing nature of work... How are learners' needs changing? Personalized learning, alternative credentials. Lifelong learning in a world that's always in motion. That's going to be fascinating. Stay tuned as we continue exploring education in the age of AI. See you there. It's a wild ride for sure. Buckle up. Welcome back to our deep dive. Part two, here we go. We've covered so much ground already. I know, it's a lot to take in. From AI outscoring humans to all these social connections and our brains. I can't stop thinking about that pencil analogy. Oh yeah, with the crack. It really makes you realize how important those early experiences are. It's a powerful image for sure. Even tiny disruptions can create lasting issues. Like a vulnerability in the foundation. Makes me wonder, could education help mend those cracks? Interesting thought. Like, could college, or any learning, provide the support to overcome those disadvantages? It's suggesting education is more than just knowledge. Almost like social intervention. To strengthen those networks, build resilience. Exactly. And what if AI could help with that? AI tutors, personalized support. Identifying those cracks, creating custom educational experiences. Now you're talking AI could analyze learning patterns, social interactions. Even emotional state. Potentially, yeah, to give feedback and guidance. Wow. Connect students with mentors, peers with similar challenges. Creating a sense of belonging. Exactly. That support system can be crucial. It's like a personalized learning companion guiding you through it all. Through the academics, Andy, the social stuff. And this could be especially helpful for those who didn't have those strong networks early on. Leveling the playing field a bit. Giving everyone a chance, regardless of background. That's the hope. But of course, we can't forget about the ethics of AI. Always got to consider that. We don't want to create new cracks. Data privacy, potential biases, it's all got to be addressed. Make sure it benefits everyone equally. Transparency and equity are key. So AI to bridge gaps, not widen them. Exactly. Now, shifting gears a bit, what about the changing nature of work? The robots are coming. It's a valid concern. AI and automation are changing everything. Jobs are being transformed. Certain tasks are just... Un-automated. So how do we prepare students for a job market that's constantly in flux? What skills will they need? What will even be a job in 10 years? It makes those Korea University slides even more relevant. Asking about the purpose of college in this new world. If technology is advancing so rapidly. We need to adapt our education, that's for sure. So what does that look like? It's about adaptability, continuous learning, problem solving. Not just memorizing facts anymore. Knowledge is still important, but it's not enough. What else? Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. The human skills. Those are what will set us apart from AI. Makes sense. And equip us for whatever the future holds. So it's not just what we know, but how we think, how we interact. You got it. This brings us back to those visualizations of Korean university departments. All those interconnected nodes. Like a giant network reflecting the modern workplace. Problems are complex, require collaboration. So those traditional divisions between subjects. They're starting to blur. Interdisciplinary approaches, more holistic understanding. Mm, that's where it's headed. So college becomes less about specializing, more about a broader skill set. A flexible mindset, embracing ambiguity, a thirst for knowledge. Lifelong learning, right? Couldn't have said it better myself. We're all students forever now, in a way. That's the reality of it. And maybe that's where those alternative pathways come in. Online courses, boot camps, all those non-traditional options. They offer flexibility, affordability, personalized learning. Catering to diverse needs in a rapidly changing world. 
so many different ways to learn and grow. That's a good thing, right? More options, more paths to success. But amid all this talk of AI and automation and jobs. We can't forget. What's that? The human element. Oh, right. It's easy to get caught up in the technology. But education is about more than that. It's about human flourishing. Not just workforce preparation. It's about nurturing well-rounded individuals. Contributing to society. Empathy, compassion, critical thinking, purpose. Those values. Empowering people to navigate life, make a positive impact. So even with AI advancing, it's those human qualities that matter most. Couldn't agree more. AI can enhance us, but it's our values and connections that define us. Beautifully said. It reminds us that education is about becoming better versions of ourselves. And making the world a better place in the process. That's a goal worth striving for. Definitely. Okay, we've explored so much in this deep dive. AI, social connections, education evolving. And I think we're starting to see a clearer picture of what it all means. The picture full of potential. It leads us to. Of course, and lots of questions still. But it's not a bleak picture by any means. Not at all. It's a picture of transformation, adaptation, and a focus on the human element. And the conversation is far from over. True. We're all figuring this out together. As AI advances, as our understanding of learning deepens, and speaking of which, in the final part of our deep dive, BGB, in the final part of our deep dive, we'll bring it all together. Key takeaways, potential pitfalls, and the exciting possibilities that lie ahead. We'll look at the roles of educators, policymakers, learners themselves, shaping the future in this dynamic landscape. Stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Gonna be good. Welcome back, everyone, for the final part of our deep dive. It's been quite a journey exploring the future of education. It has, hasn't it? AI, social networks, brain development, it's a lot. We've deconstructed those old ideas about college, the purpose of it all. And with AI changing the game so fast. It feels like we're rebuilding the whole system from scratch. Trying to figure out what works in this new world. That's exactly what we're doing. So as we move towards this future, what are the key takeaways? What have we learned? Well, first off, education isn't just about stuffing facts in our heads. Right, it's more than that. It's about building skills, those human skills that AI can't replicate. Critical thinking, creativity. <laughs> Collaboration, communication, all those things. Like we have to become more human, not less, as technology advances. It's a fascinating paradox, isn't it? It is. And that leads to the second takeaway, right? Lifelong learning. In a world that's constantly changing, we have to keep learning, adapting. It's not just about those years in school anymore. It's a continuous process. And that brings us to the third takeaway, the need for personalized learning paths. We can't assume a four-year degree is the answer for everyone. Different strokes for different folks. We need to be open to online courses, apprenticeships, all sorts of options. So many ways to reach your goals. Finding what works best for each individual. Like choosing your own adventure. Exactly. But as we explore these new paths, there are some potential dangers. Okay, what could go wrong? What should we watch out for? Well, one big concern is that AI could actually make inequality worse. Oh, how so? If we're not careful, AI systems could end up reinforcing existing biases. So instead of leveling the playing field... It could tilt it even further. We don't want that. We need to ensure AI promotes equity and fairness. AI for good, right? Exactly. It's about how we use it. Okay, so we've talked takeaways, potential yeah. pitfalls. What about the exciting stuff? Yeah, what are the possibilities? What's got you hopeful? Well, imagine truly personalized learning experiences. Like tailored to each student. AI tutors adapting to your needs, your learning style, your pace. Wow, that would be amazing. It could revolutionize how we learn. But what about the social aspect? We've talked a lot about human connection. That will always be crucial. So how do we balance that with AI? Well, those Korean university visualizations actually offer some clues. Oh, how so? We're seeing a shift towards more collaborative learning environments. Students working together. On real-world projects, connecting with people from different backgrounds. So even with AI, those human interactions are still key. Absolutely. And AI can even enhance those connections. In what way? Imagine platforms that connect students with mentors and peers globally. A worldwide network of learners. Expanding the classroom beyond physical walls. I, that's pretty cool. And th this leads to another possibility, right? Alternative credentials. As the job market evolves, those traditional degrees... They not be enough anymore. We're seeing a rise in micro-credentials, certification... Showing you have specific skills. It's becoming more about what you can do, not just where you went to school. A more 
skills-based approach. Which could make education more accessible. More options, more flexibility. So it's not just about college anymore. It's about finding the right path for you. Personalized learning, collaborative environments, alternative credentials. The future of education is going to be dynamic, that's for sure. It's exciting. But it's not just up to the technology, is it? Not at all. We all have a role to play. Educators, policymakers, learners. We're all shaping this future together. So what can we do? How do we make sure it's a positive future? For educators, it's about embracing new tech, but also encouraging student agency. Helping them take ownership of their learning. Designing experiences that go beyond memorization. Fostering critical thinking, creativity, a love of learning. And for policymakers, it's about investing in equitable access to technology. Supporting those innovative models. Creating policies that promote lifelong learning and skills development. Building a system that works for everyone. And for learners, it's about being proactive, curious. Open to new experiences, embracing the challenges. Finding your own unique path to success. It's about taking control, becoming the architects of our own futures. Exactly, it's an empowering message. So as we wrap up this deep dive, any final thoughts for our listeners? In this age of AI, the future of education isn't something that will just happen to us. We're not passive bystanders. We create it together. So let's embrace the unknown, question everything, reimagine what's possible. There are no limits, only the ones we set for ourselves. That's a great way to put it. Be curious, be bold, be the change you want to see. The future is in our hands. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. It's been an incredible journey. Keep learning, keep questioning, keep pushing those boundaries. Until next time, everyone.